for items to inflate a difficulty curve afterwards and you know so maybe is that's sort of with what you're saying is there a as yet unknown primary goal at level 60 well generally history tends to repeat itself so with that basic premise in mind what if what we're really talking about after the game's out it's in between patches or even after the expansions and whatnot what if what we're really talking about are things like the uber diablo quest the things that are generally impossible to do with the standard norm gear that you'll have in hell you'd really have to deck out and be crazy crazy set in order to accomplish the goal you know it's not all that outlandish because like i say it is something that they've employed in the past yeah and we've used it as an example in the past when people have been like, what do you think Endgame's going to be? It's something we come back to, something we're not opposed to. I, I think, I believe that's been the consensus, is that we like the idea of ball-crushingly difficult uh, bonus bosses. Absolutely. Right. I think uh, it's just more of an emphasis on, you know, what he means by that. As in Diablo 2, you would have your magic find character that you would go into a game and go off on by yourself and go farm items. Whereas in with the way they're doing loot in Diablo 3, where you get your own separate pile of loot to pick from, it promotes, you know, going out with a bunch of friends and go, going wiping out a bunch of bosses, if you can, and having fun that way. Because you all, you all get your separate pile of loot, and maybe the mob... Uh, drops are better because there's more people in the game. That's my assumption anyway. I like it. Yep. Better gear with the more people that are in the game. Makes sense. Doesn't promote playing by yourself. <laughs> right. Unless you're into that kind of thing. Here's a, uh, here's something. We were talking about things that they've done before, and I just realized, you know, I was reading earlier today the preview of uh, the next raid content patch for, uh, for World of Warcraft, and they're talking about how the end boss of the next raid on heroic difficulty is going to be a completely different different encounter. So maybe it's something like that. Hell difficulty, you know, hell difficulty final boss is technically the same boss, but ultimately a completely different encounter. Oh. So you're that is just so so instead of Uber Diablo being a hidden kind of extra quest after the fact that you need to sort of go and hunt down. After it's you sell just, 50 SOJs. <laughs> yeah, you know, or, or whatever. It's just a, you know, it's just that the final boss in Hell Difficulty is life-suckingly difficult. And that's just the way it is. It's like, hey, this is Hell Difficulty. This is what you signed up for. You do everything, and then bam, you hit that. And so Magic Find does become a secondary thing. All of this other stuff becomes a secondary thing because you could be level 60 and still not have that final boss down because it's like, hey, this is the capstone thing. This is the last difficulty. This is the last boss. We have ramped it up to 11. Right. And any Magic gear, magic Find gear that you have is going to be useless. You're going to need legendary son. You need to be legendary <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. Other than that, uh, Bashiak just reiterating the mix of items you'll have on your endgame character, which is a mix of set, legendary, and rare, if everything goes right. I like it. Yep. I love it. That's one of the bigger things that I, I had such a problem with in some of the, the previous things. It also makes me think that some it's not yellow or gold, it's not worth it. <laughs> nice. Yeah, set bonus sets will probably be uh, be smaller as a result just because fewer slots, or so the number of slots. Bigger game, bigger item base, more variation. A lot more variation. <sighs> Is it out yet? I wish. <laughs> I just want to play already. <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys had read this, but a uh, New York Times reporter recently got to go. Unfortunately, his report is is basically empty of uh, any new content though uh, the one useful tidbit that he was able to bring out of it aside from gloating about being able to play the game for an hour is that they are definitely in the downslope of the uh, of the production run so there we go confirmation from home base Sweet. That, that oh yeah I did they're somewhere that. between third base and home nice excellent bait is getting closer but we'll find out May 9th, which is the conference call, we'll, when they will talk about the beta. So look forward to that. Ken, you got to get going? Uh, yeah, no, I got to get heading out. See you guys. See ya. Have fun at work. Oh, Take I care, won't. Ken.
<laughs> All right, so the last little bit of news we got is just uh, two new Facebook images for the 850,000 milestone Diablo Facebook likes. One thing I really wanted to note, let me just bring them up here real quick. The first one we got is of some town guards, uh, Chaldeum town guards, which you can actually see two of these guys in game models on the Chaldeum page on Diablo3.com. They got two of them rendered out there. I really like that shield design. Yeah, it's very oh, yeah. cool. I love the attention to detail in these. Yeah, that's it's actually what incredible. I commented on with the image on uh, the Facebook page, is that shield, more specifically the center one. What do you guys think? Are those actually swords coming out of the base of that shield? Oh, that isn't a shield. Wait, the, that's, no, that's, that's, the, back the, that's the back view of the guy. His cloak has Slots for holes for his oh, uh, I see. holes to go through. Yeah. Interesting. I noticed that too. It does look like a shield, though, the way it's drawn. Yeah. It is uh, it is kind of odd the way that... I think it's odd the way that the cloak is coming down to a point. Yeah. I do actually see the feet, so that that's kind of what threw me off. I'm yeah, like, me too. well... If it were a cloak, wouldn't it be like in this other picture where you know, kind of Billing. goes out? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the two the two models you can see are is the guy in the middle and the guy on the left, the guy with the shield and spear and the guy with the two swords. The dude on the right with the giant burly sword hasn't made an appearance yet, but I assume we'll see him somewhere in Chaldeum. Uh, our, if my misplaced <laughs> guess. So that guy on the left, I I thought he might have been class number five, but he is alas, but a lowly guard. <laughs> Yeah, lowly epic guard. <laughs> yeah, these guys look burly. Dude, I would love one of those random events where Chaldeum is under siege and you got to help these guys fight fight off hordes of demons. How cool would that be? So really, the oh. the only question left I have for that guy on the left is, can I have his shield? <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you die, can I just like take that? Take your, <laughs> can I have your stuff? <laughs> the other shot we got, which I don't know, I'm. It's a PvP screenshot, and if you count how many characters you see on screen, there are five. There's three red guys and two blue guys, which, up to this point, I've just assumed PvP will be 2v2, but... No, no, they've said 3v3. Oh, okay. In fact, did they did they say up to 4v4, or was 4v4 suspected but unconfirmed? You know, but we knew about 3v3. No we knew idea. about 3v3. Oh, news to me. <laughs> Dude, there's some gross stuff going on in this picture. Ew. Do you guys have it up right now? Yeah, it's... Look over on the it on the right. It doesn't look like a very good team composition. You've got two witch doctors and a sorcerer against, uh, like, barbarians. <laughs> two barbs versus a wizard and uh, two witch doctors. Well, it seems to be working. I don't see their third party member there. Touche. <laughs> Oh, you're talking about you're talking about the dismembered. Yeah, I'm talking right about the little details there. on the sides. The the entrails, with the guts, <laughs> and the freaking ew. Good times. That's so gross. That's what that is. <laughs> yeah. and, and there's what we've been, you know. And and I I defended Blizzard a few months ago when people were saying it's like yeah, it, it looks too clean. I'm like, trust me, they're gonna make a run. Yeah. They're gonna make a pass, and they're gonna go through, and they're gonna dirty it yeah. up. This is not kid friendly. <laughs> Now, you know what I want to see in one of these arena battles? What? I want to see my my barbarian ally leap attack, smash someone to death, and see their corpse fly into one of those holes and disappear. (laughs) Oh, it will. It will happen. Or get skewered on a spike and just hang there. (laughs) Yeah, that's what I was going to say. One or the other. (laughs) Both are equally acceptable in my book. (laughs) Uh, Cool shot, nonetheless. There is something that I want to mention about this, which uh, which is a, a technical thing, but it's a really good uh, really good sign. Is that in this shot, um, the the shaders and anti aliasing are starting to uh, are starting to get into play. If you look at things like the edge of their the edge of the models, particularly on things like cloaks and uh, and like the pants, which is where it was most noticeable before, it's a lot smoother. Mm-hmm. So they're getting those kind of um, higher level uh, technical features implemented now. Oh yeah. Yep. Yep. Beautiful picture. I think it's interesting. You've got the uh, the barbarian at the top corner with the uh, the shield skill up, but you also had the fire effect kind of immersed in it in this weird sort of way. Yeah. Almost like it, you know, it looks like a little nuclear bomb went off in there, and it's <laughs> not actually quite attached to him. It's kind of diverted by the shield a little bit. It's kind of interesting. 
That's a cool picture. And if you look really closely at the bottom barbarian, you actually see locusts swarming oh, yeah. around the uh, you do. around the arms. Hmm, how about that? Yeah, all kinds of little details. You'd notice it more if it was, you know, in a video because you could actually see things moving right. around. But in a still yeah. shot, you have to be really, really meticulous to pick it yep. out. Dude, those bodies are gross. <laughs> Can't get over that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Guts hanging out. But yeah, I guess that'll do it for us on the show this week. As always, thank you all for joining us for yet another great show. Uh, any questions, feedback you have is more than welcome. Feel free to send them any way you see fit. Carrier pigeon, smoke signals, or less, more convenient, less creative digital ways. <laughs> uh, in the words of Forrest Gump, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> so say goodbye, gentlemen. Goodbye. Goodbye, loyal eight. We'll see you all next time on the World Stone Keep.